G'day everyone, from the heart of Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. I'm your host, Addie Williams de Vries, coming to you from King George Square in the Central Business District, hereafter known as the CBD, and I'm standing in front of City Hall. This video brings you the practical uses of geology, namely what are the buildings, what rocks are the buildings of Brisbane made of? Now, I can tell you right now, dating back to the earliest days of convict settlement, Brisbane Tuff and various granites and sandstones from different quarries around southeast Queensland. Right, a bit of history about the settlement of Brisbane and then we'll get to the geology. The area that we now know as Brisbane was originally occupied by the Yugga and Turbal peoples and the river contained an abundant supply of food including fish, shellfish, crab and prawns. There were lots of open woodlands with rainforests in places and it was a natural avenue for seasonal movement, meaning that Brisbane was a way station for Abor Aboriginal groups travelling to ceremonies and spectacles uh, up to 600 people in a camp. And these ca camps functioned well after uh, the Brits got here. So Brisbane's recorded history dates back to 1799. Remember the first fleet landed at Botany Bay in 1788. So 1799 Matthew Flinders explored Morton Bay looking for a site for a penal colony. So Flinders was coming from Port Jackson, Sydney on his way to Harvey Bay uh, which is several hours north of here. Uh, really really great um, whale watching up there and uh, he explored Morton Bay. So he made a uh, landfall at Woody Point in Redcliffe, uh, Coochie Mudlow Island in the bay, and Pumastone Passage, um, which is between the mainland and Bribey Island. So despite 15 days in the environs of Morton Bay, uh, he failed to find the Brisbane River. Now, uh, permanent settlement, actually there's a funny story about who found the Brisbane River, I'll tell you that in a sec. So a uh, permanent settlement here wasn't until 1823 when the New South Wales Governor was petitioned by the free settlers in Sydney to send the very worst convicts up here, they didn't want to deal with them anymore. Now, as Nick would say, I can't hold it because this is hilarious. Four explorers including the aforementioned Flinders and Captain Cook, sailed through Morton Bay and failed to find the mouth of the Brisbane River. You'll never believe who did. Four ticket of leave convicts um, who sailed what they thought was south from Sydney to Illawarra, Illawarra for timber, got caught in a storm and uh, got blown off course. Well, way off course. Uh, we're talking a thousand kilometres off course. Um, now they went 21 days without water, one of them died. So they were convinced they'd been blown south. So they kept going north and they landed on Morton Island um, in the bay and made it to the mainland. Now convinced that they'd been blown south, they started trekking north. And uh, that's where uh, they discovered the Brisbane River. Uh, they walked upstream for nearly a month. And um, they crossed the river at what is still called Canoe Reach, uh, where um, Boxley Creek runs into the river. And uh, they pitched a small canoe left by the Aborigines. Now, how did the explorer John Oxley in 1823 find this out? Uh, John Oxley, who's got a suburb and a creek named after him, was a surveyor general who set out from Sydney looking for a likely settlement for the worst convicts the free settlers didn't want to deal with in Sydney. And uh, at Point Skirmish uh, by Morton, um, he was approached by several Aborigines, uh, one of which was uh, several uh, shades, skin shades lighter, uh, skin, sh skin shades lighter um, than uh, the other ones and he spoke English, and guess who that was? Uh, that was one of the freed convicts uh, who'd been blown off course by the name of Thomas Pamplett. 
and he'd been living with the Indigenous tribe for several months. And I'll tell you a bit uh, more about that uh, next week. Anyway, they established the first convict colony up at Redcliffe before moving to a site now called North Quay, uh, a few bo blocks behind me, uh, a, a year later. Uh, and this place was called Mijin by the Turbal inhabitants. So up until 1859, uh, when Queensland separated from the state of New South Wales, this place was called Morton Bay. And then Chief Justice Forbes decided to combine the names of Edinburgh and Glasgow, calling it Edinglassie, but that wasn't terribly popular. Um, and it was decided to call the settlement Brisbane after Sir Thomas Brisbane, uh, who was the governor of New South Wales. Now, this colony was originally established as a prison within a prison where the worst convicts were sent for punishment and it garnered a, garnered a reputation as one of the harshest penal settlements around. So in July of 1828, Patrick Logan set the convicts to work on the commissariat store on uh, Queen's Wharf and uh, I'll show you that later, uh, along with the old windmill on Wigan Terrace. Uh, where we're going next. So uh, these two buildings are the only convict era buildings still standing in Queensland. So along with constantly escaping convicts, local Aborigines kept trying to starve out the settlement by destroying the crops, uh, the cornfields at what's today South Bank. Uh, and in retaliation, the colony guards would shoot said Aboriginals, uh, trying to enter the cornfields. So a bloke called Alan Cunningham in 1928 uh, he's got a highway named after him now, uh, discovered a route to the fertile Darling Downs and there was commercial pressure to develop a pastoral industry, uh, wool especially, uh, and so in 1838 uh, Brisbane was opened up for free settlers. Brisbane was declared a municipality in 1859 and John Petrie became the first mayor. Uh, he's got a suburb named after him, uh, up in the northern suburbs and also um, a bite in the river. So um, also in 1859 uh, Queensland was formally established as a self-governing colony of Great Britain, separate from New South Wales. Uh, a great day for Queenslanders that. Uh, and remember that federation uh, didn't happen till 1901 so uh, Queensland was effectively its own colony own country uh, and we still have that mentality. So originally Ipswich was meant to be the capital of Queensland but it was too far up river for large ships so Brisbane got the gig. Now Brisbane City Hall behind me was opened in 1930, I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second and uh, this is still a sticking point with a lot of northern Australians. Uh, in World War II uh, Brisbane was used to mark the position of the Brisbane Line, uh, which was a pretty uh, controversial decision, a uh, defence proposal by the Menzies government. It basically said um, if the Japanese invade us, they can have anywhere in Australia north of Brisbane. Uh, the US servicemen stationed here at the time were not popular, uh, oversexed and over here, although they were popular with the women. And there was a riot in November of 1942, which at the time was not reported in the US at all and is known as the Battle of Brisbane. So there you go, you lot, you learned something new, didn't you? So we had trams and trains, uh, but most uh, people relied on water tanks, uh, rainwater tanks, until Clem Jones came along and laid new sewers. And you can still see this in some of the old houses. Um, isn't that a nice shot, eh? That's, um, I think that's uh, Helen and Sandstone. But I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. So, um, yeah, uh, you can still see this in old houses, but um, they didn't have um, toilets in the house. Uh, they had uh, what's called an outback outhouse, or a dunny, or a thunderbox out the back to do your business in. And uh, you had to watch out for the redback spiders uh, biting you on the backside in the middle of the night. 
So Clem Jones came along and fixed the sewers, but he got rid of the trams in favour of the freeways and uh, a lot of us are still not happy about that. Uh, the Brisbane River flooded a lot, I'll tell you more about that next week. And there's been a lot of development in the last 30 years. So we hosted the Commonwealth Games in 1982, um, Expo 88, uh, World Exposition uh, in 1988, that really put Brisbane on the map. Uh, and the 2014 G20 Brisbane Summit and heaps of sporting events. Uh, I mean, we're not the sporting capital of Australia, that's Melbourne, but we're not far behind. So we're now a city of over 2.5 million people, third biggest in Oz, culturally diverse, uh, with almost a third of the population born elsewhere, and it ranks very highly in the ratings of livable cities. All right. Isn't that a nice shot, eh? So, all right, enough of the history. I hope I'm bored you to death. Let's get into the geology. So, if you walk around the Brisbane CBD, um, you note that a lot of the buildings are made of stone. But what stone and where did it come from? So, some of the first stones quarried in Patrick Logan's time using the convicts was Brisbane Tough which is still called Porphyry and I explained last week that uh, it was originally identified as Porphyry uh, but it's not, it's, um, it's Ignambrite. Yeah, so it's actually part of a massive pyroclastic flow 226 million years ago. So this is quarried from Kangaroo Point where we went last week, Spring Hill, which we're about to head up to, uh, Windsor, which I'll um, introduce you to in a few weeks. So we had sandstone quarried from Goodna, Mogul, Breakfast Creek and Granite from Ashgrove, um, near my suburb, uh, Camp Mountain, um, and that's the Sam Samford Granodiorite, and Mount Crosby. So while early on, only stone close to the city was quarried, hang on. Hang on, I just, look at that, that's where that's coming from. So that goes every 15 minutes, and you'll probably hear the top of the hour. All right, so while early on, only stone close to the city was quarried, and uh, some of it was of rather dubious quality. The better stone, um, your sandstones came from further afield at Helladon. Um, I've got a story about Helladon, but I don't know if I should tell you. Uh, Murphy's Creek, um, Yangon and Warwick, your sandstones which uh, Warwick, which along with Toowoomba, uh, 370 million years ago was continental shelf. And where I'm sitting was deep in, deep in the ocean. So they named the stone after where it came from, Aussies being masters of the bleeding obvious. So, um, your goodness sandstone um, on the way to Ipswich uh, from the Raceview formation is a light pink a light brown and we'll see St Stephen's Chapel. Your Mogul Sandstone or the Tivoli Formation is fine grain, usually whitish to grey and some brown and was used in the Alice Street facade of Palmer House. The Brecky Creek as we call it, Breakfast Creek Sandstone, named because um, when John Oxley was sailing around the Brisbane River uh, they came upon this creek that ran into the river and they had breakfast there. They call it Brecky Creek, well, Breakfast Creek, and being Aussies, we shorten everything. So the Brecky Creek sandstone, which is in the Brisbane Tough unit, is white to light brown and coarser grain, and is used in the Old General Post Office, uh, St Stephen's Cathedral, um, and the Deanery at St John's Cathedral. I'll have a look at that later. So Helladon sandstone, which is about an hour and a half west of here along the Warrego Highway on the way to Toowoomba, Again, ancient continental shelf, seems to have been the most popular. Behind me. Uh, white, light brown, lavender or pink stone. And uh, it's got characteristic irregular circular banding uh, caused by iron and manganese oxide depo deposited from groundwater that circulated in the rock mass. So you'll see it uh, here, City Hall. Uh, you're looking at it right now. Um, 
the uh, uh, Treasury Hotel and the University of Queensland. I'll take you there in a few weeks. Then you've got your Brisbane Tough, or, uh, which is your welded tough or ignimbrite, uh, Latin for wiry shower. Uh, it would have been at the time. So it was quarried from the Kangaroo Point Cliffs. We went there last week, uh, Windsor, and Quarry Street at Spring Hill. So I might take you there in a sec. Uh, so you've got St Mary's Anakin Church, Kangaroo Point, which we saw last week. Uh, the Commissariat Store, which is our last stop today, St John's Cathedral, you'll see that soon. Um, and stone from the Windsor Quarry, you can see at the base of the Treasury Hotel, Government Printing Offices, uh, the main structures of St John's Cathedral. Then you've got your artificial Benedict stone, named after James Benedict, uh, which was manufactured at uh, Bowen Hills, which consists of crushed Brisbane tough, which is then sifted for the impurities to get rid of the bad stuff. And it's bound by a car coloured cement. So you'll see that. Um, in the Minor Apartment Buildings in Queen Street. Now she takes a deep breath and we come to your granite. First is our old favourite, the Inogra granite. Yeah, so the Inogra granite, which is mined at Ashgrove and St John's Wood. Uh, so you can see that at the base of the Treasury Hotel uh, and City Hall, and I'll show you that in a sec. To the north of that, you've got your Sanford granodiorite, which is uh, light grey and medium to coarse grain. Uh, quarried at Camp Mountain. Again, you can see it here. Um, also, Macarthur Chambers and the University of Queensland. So you've got your pink and grey granite from the um, Mount Sampson granodiorite, uh, which was previously called the uh, Cedar Creek granite. I also used at Macarthur Chambers uh, in Queen Street. In Colo Creek, southwest of Brisbane, you've got your Karana Quartz diorite, um, previously the Mount Crosby granite, which you can see in the Treasury Hotel. And then all the way from Mount Isa, you've got your Sabella granite, uh, which is very popular amongst the local architects here now. And we'll see some of that in uh, Queen Street as exfoliated paving stones. Righty, let's go for a walk, shall we? Excuse the noise, folks, we are in the centre of the city. Brisbane City Hall. First foundation stone laid in 1917. Though it was later found out town to be out of alignment, removed, and then they lost it. So the second one was laid in 1920. Construction began then, and as the site was swampy, uh, it actually contained a creek. Um, they uh, needed lots of pumping to keep the site dry, and a um, surveyor actually uh, died during surveying. So uh, not finished till 1930 the building was occupied from 1928 it's got a beautiful 1891 Henry Willis pipe organ inside the Grand Ballroom which was completely dismantled and restored in 2009 when the rest of the building was restored because uh, of subsidence, concrete cancer and dodgy wiring I'm just panning you around a little bit playing with my gizmo I've got a new gizmo same as Nick has. There you go. So it's designed according to the Italian Renaissance style. Three floors and a partial basement with columns, which you're looking at right now. A Corinthian and Ionic order and a clock tower. I'll just, uh, hang on, here we go, clock tower. Um, and it was once the uh, tallest building in town. So let's um, let's come a bit closer. Let's see how close we can get, eh? All right. So your base is Samford granite diorite. So. Uh, there you go, that's the, uh, that's the stone that was laid when the place was opened. So, you got uh, your darker Samford granodiorite and then your lighter coloured, um, well, I think it's all um, Samford granodiorite actually. Look at those big minerals, huh? Oh, look at that. Hang on, let's uh, zoom in. Oh, wow. 
Look at that. Whoa. Pretty, huh? And then, let me zoom out again. That stone is your Heliden sandstone. Look at that. What? Oh, pretty. So, you got granite for the ground floor inside. I'm not going to go inside because uh, they wouldn't let me film with a tripod. I can only film with the gizmo. Alright. In the basement is an Ogre granite. So I'm going to swing you around. City Hall um, sits on King George Square, which is what you're looking at right now. Look at that. Which a friend of mine affectionately calls King Grill Square, owing to the fact that when they ripped it up, to uh, put in an underground car park and busway. Um, they um, replaced all the lovely grass, trees and fountain with concrete. And if you walk across it in the height of summer, you pretty much get fried in five minutes. All right. So that pretty church, let me get you a shot of that. Hey. That pretty church is Albert Street Uniting Church where I've played many concerts. It was formerly the Methodist Church and it was built between 1888 and 1889 built of red brick and the white trimmings are Oamaru limestone little invertebrate aquatic critters sometimes called white stone and that's um, all the way from near Otago in New Zealand. Right, I'm going to hike up to Spring Hill to show you the old windmill. All right, uh, this is not geology related, but uh, some of the wildlife and its natural habitat. So we have crocs here in Brisbane. Ha 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 ha. I know, funny. So, um, I'm making my way uh, up to Spring Hill. It's a hill. But um, here's a shot. City Hall for you. Then we swing around. More of the CBD. And uh, that's the, uh, that's Roma Street Station. You got Taylor Range. Behind you. Um, I don't know if you can see some uh, TV towers. That's Mancutha. All right, onwards and upwards. Oh, geez, I'm not looking forward to that. All right, I made it up to the top of Spring Hill. So, the old windmill is the oldest convict built structure. Surviving in Queensland, built in 1828 by Patrick Logan's convicts uh, to grind the grain. And it had a treadmill, not only to grind the grain when there was no wind, uh, but also to punish the convicts. Uh, they stopped using it to grind grain in 1845 and removed the treadmill in 1849 and they used it as a signal station and as you can see they um, they installed a time ball to assist in regulating the clocks and watches and then they used the facility for early radio telephony and TV communication research from the 1920s now in 1841 the tower was reputedly used as the site of a public ex execution of two Aboriginal men who had murdered an assistant surveyor and these two men still haunt the site supposedly I think somebody debunked that so the base see that right there is Brisbane Tough Kangaroo Point 
uh, about 55 inches thick at the bottom and standing on bedrock um, and the walls are of English bond clay brick all right see you in a second so we passed the Baptist City Tabernacle built in 1890 designed by Richard Gailey that's just made of rendered cement so not very interesting there this pretty little church is All Saints Anglican Church completed in 1869 which makes it the oldest Anglican Church in Brisbane it was commissioned by Bishop Philip Tuff, uh, sorry, Bishop Tufnell, not Philip Tufnell, he's an English spinner, in 1861, and George Souter oversaw alterations in 1869. It's made out of Brisbane Tuff face rubble, Brisbane Tuff um, rubble, and sandstone. Alright, and if I swing around here, You'll see the Masonic Temple. I've actually done a concert in there. It was constructed between 1928 and 1930. Built in the classic, classical revival style with Corinthian columns. It's got a grey granite base. Hang on. Swing around. Grey granite base is from Yengen, a little town on the southern downs near the border. From a quarry which fronts Swan Creek. So, uh, just down the road, this is St John's Anglican Cathedral, the second oldest Anglican church in Brisbane. But it was only completed recently in 2009 in three stages, between 1906 and 2009. So I was working in a building across the road and I saw the workmen at it. Uh, so those things on top there they were the last things to go on so isn't it pretty so it's in the gothic revival style and it's made of pink and mauve Brisbane tough from Windsor the interior is Helidon sandstone and you can see there's um, the granite and the basalt in the foundations and base of the columns inside uh, it comes from Victoria and the sandstone for the window dressings doorways and arcading came in New South Wales and if we go for a bit of a walk uh, we'll go past uh, St Martin's house over there hang on so it's a bit close up and you can see all the different pretty colors of the Brisbane Tuff from the Windsor Quarry so I've just got to show you close up the beautiful Windsor Quarry Brisbane Tuff at the base. Look at all those pretty colours, huh? Oh man, something. And uh, so we're now we're looking at some sandstones. And uh, that's this is St Martin's house. But uh, if we go back to this. Oops, oh, I'm still getting the hang of the gizmo. Look at all those pretty colours over the Brisbane Tuff. And uh, there's your sandstone over there in the arches. But uh, I think that the, the different colours of the Brisbane Tuff pyroclastic flow are uh, quite amazing. Let me go close up. You might even be able to see a bit of flattened pumice. Look at that. Oh, that's just... Hey, how gorgeous. And there's your... Uh, there's a bit more, but that's not sort of as, it's a bit more weathered. Look at all those gorgeous colours. Oh, wow. Something amazing. I uh, just got to show you again. Some real pretty sandstones. Aren't they? Just gorgeous. Wow. Very nice. And again, you got your Brisbane Tuff below. And your pretty sandstones above. This is St Martin's house uh, next to the cathedral. Very pretty. So one of the uses for the Brisbane Tuff is lining the curb sides of the footpath. 
So we're walking along uh, Adelaide Street right now, uh, towards the uh, back of the cathedral, and uh, we'll see ourselves some Ranley Burnbale beds. All right, so this is uh, behind the cathedral up there, and we're looking at um, the bedrock of this part of Brisbane. Um, I have to shoot it from across the road because there's no footpath across there. As you can see, this is one of the main drags. So you're looking at the weathered argillite of the Moranley Fernvale beds. And just a bit down there, that's more Brisbane Tuff. So this is weathered argillite. So argillite's a fine grained sedimentary rock that used to be clay. Just a bit harder. But not as metamorphosed as a rock of the Bunya Philite. So you can see it's quite weathered. Steeply inclined towards the northeast. And I'm going to walk down. You'll see a section of pale coloured rock. You see that? Coming up to it. Look at that. All right. So there's your pale coloured rock. And that uh, indicates crushing from a fault zone. And there might even be some quartzite in there as well. Actually, look at that. Look how you can see how steeply inclined it is. And there's your light coloured rock. What oh, a pretty colours, eh? Oh. So remember this area? It used to be deep, 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 deep in the ocean. 370 million years ago, when the coast of Queensland was out of Dolby. So I'm standing at the corner of Adelaide and Creek Streets in Brisbane. Creek Street's so named because right where we're looking, there's a creek, deep underground now, but it used to be uh, it used to be at the surface. So uh, the convicts uh, bricked it up all down uh, metres below where you, where I'm standing. There's a creek. All right, onwards and upwards. All right, I'm going to show you this. I don't know what I'm looking at, but um, it's polished igneous rock of some sort. I'd say that's granite. But, uh, look at those, um, it's polished. Look at those minerals, hey? Whoa. And then if we go up a bit, some beautiful, beautiful sandstone, hey? Oh, look at that. Oh, fabulous. Gorgeous, let me uh, walk past. So you see more of the polished granite and the sandstone up the top. This is the SAP building. So I'm on my way to Anzac Square, where I need to charge my phone when I visit my mother-in-law. Back in a sec. Okay, uh, we're here at the Adina Apartment Hotel in Brisbane on Anzac Square, where uh, my mother-in-law lives. And I just want to show you some pretty sandstone. So I'll put down in the comments where this sandstone comes from. Isn't that beautiful? Hey, look at that beautiful sandstone. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, look at that. And uh, I'd say that's a little bit of polished granite underneath that. I'll find out and I'll put that. So, very uh, nice place. This is where my mother-in-law lives. And there's some more beautiful, beautiful sandstone. Just, um, just specked. Oh, look at that, hey? Oh, look at that. That's just, um, that's just spectacular. Oh, and there's a bit of more granite. Excuse the um, traffic noise, we're on the main drag. 
Now if I swing you around, that is the Grand Central Hotel where my husband and I met for the first time. It was called uh, for Helis back then. Uh, it's called the Grand Central Hotel now. And they call it the Grand Central Hotel because they're Central Station. The uh, Central sta Main Station in town. There you go. Right. Coming across. This is Anzac Square. So, um, Helidon Sandstone, which I, I assume the Adena is made out of. So this is Anzac Square. So it was opened on Armistice Day in 1930. Armistice Day is November 11, the 11th of the 11th. And at 11 o'clock, the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month. World War One ended. And Anzac um, is very special to the Australian psyche. Look at that beautiful sandstone. Oh, wow. That's just spectacular. This is probably a Helidon sandstone. No, it was very popular. Very popular. Um, comes from um, out near about an hour and a half away from here. So um, ANZAC, A-N-Z-A-C, stands for the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. And uh, that meant that uh, the Australia and New Zealand troops were always uh, at the beck and call of the English in any war, even if we had nothing to do with it. And uh, the ANZAC tradition was built on, um, well, it was a complete stuff up actually by the Brits. Uh, but at Gallipoli uh, in 1914 on uh, April 25th, which we celebrate as Anzac Day. Look at that. And uh, yeah, the Brits made a colossal mistake in sending the uh, troops in to the wrong part of the coast. Um, they sent them to where there was a lot of cliffs and uh, unfortunately the Aussies and New Zealanders got completely slaughtered and uh, it built the Anzac tradition from then on in. So Australia, uh, so April 25th is a very sacred day for Australians, New Zealanders, the Anzac tradition. So this includes the Shrine of Remembrance, which we're looking at. And uh, if you see between the columns, um, you'll see the eternal flame of remembrance, which is held in a continuously lit bronze urn. So there's 18 columns of the shrine. It represents the year of peace um, after World War I, 1918. Uh, now, if I was to um, walk down the steps, I won't. But if I was to walk down the steps, you've got um, 19, then 18. There's the Shrine of Memories underneath. So the columns are made out of Helidon sandstone. It's a very, uh, a very pretty sandstone. Either that's uh, particularly pretty. Look at those beautiful swirls and colours. Just gorgeous. So I love the, num the number symbolism as well. So this is uh, Anzac Square. I'm going to take a little bit of a hike down there and show you a few things. But I need to turn the camera off so I can walk down the stairs. So here's another look at the memorial. 
uh, in memory of the Anzacs. And I'll just show you some more sandstone. Look at these beautiful, look at these beautiful, beautiful sandstone. Oh wow. Oh wow, look at that, hey? Oh, look at that, hey? And these are the steps going up. So these are your 18 steps going up. And your 19 steps going down. I'm going to turn off the camera and concentrate so I can walk down them without falling over. So this is what the shrine looks like from down below. And look at all those beautifully coloured Heliden sandstone. So Heliden was on the continental shelf. That's the Adena where my, my mother-in-law lives. We just had coffee and uh, lunch. It's getting down lunch time now. Look at that. All right. Now, if I come over here, you'll see yourself some more Brisbane Tough. So old horoclastic flow from 226 million years ago. Look at all those beautiful, beautiful colours of ignimbrite. Fiery shower. It would have been a fiery shower. And then uh, you got your, uh, you got your, so you've got, got a couple of different kinds of rocks here. Very interesting. And then you got uh, your tough again. And I'll just show you some of the local flora. I'm not sure what this is right now, but I will put this in the comments. Over there, you got Post Office Square. So very um, special place. There's a um, few um, war memorials, so it's not just dedicated to the Anzacs at Gallipoli. It's uh, for all of our, for all of the wars, for all of the soldiers that have died in all of the wars. So this is a war memorial that predates the Anzacs. This is actually the South African War, the Boer War, 1899 to 1902. And if you again look at our feet, beautiful, beautiful sandstone. And then if we come over here, you see more of your Brisbane Tough. So here is a close up of the uh, post office and uh, a, a memorial for the uh, post officers that lost their lives in the Great War. First World War, and then the post people, the posties that lost their lives in the Second World War. And so um, you can see sandstone, I'll find out where that came from. That looks like a bit of tough. All right, going to take you through to the cathedral. Okay, we come to St. Stephen's Cathedral, the Catholic Cathedral, and St. Stephen's Chapel. So, the cathedral was going to be much grander. The foundation stone was laid in 1863 on the feast of St. Stephen, and the current nave built in 1874. So it was going to be much grander, but they ran out of money. And it was completed in 1922, so it's gothic in style. And it comprises of Goodna and Breakfast Creek sandstone. There you go, Goodna and Breakfast Creek sandstone. So Brecky Creek is where uh, John Oxley um, had breakfast. And they called it Breakfast Creek or Brecky Creek. Swing around. There's some, uh, this is the post office building. There you go. That looks like some more tough. And the colour's pretty. So this is MacArthur Chambers. Formerly the old AMP building. 
And what you're looking at there is Mount Sampson Renault Diorite. And as you can see, it polishes up real nice. I'll have to find out where that sandstone comes from. And I wonder if that is your uh, Benedict stone. I will look that up. Look at that. So, and there, of course, is more Brisbane Tuff. So most uh, Brisbaneites have no idea of the history and geology beneath their feet. So this is uh, a heritage apartment hotel um, and also a museum. There you go. It's uh, oh wow, look at that pretty, look at that pretty sandstone. Oh wow, isn't it just gorgeous or what? Oh, oh man, she needs a change of underwear. I'll check out what that is. I wonder if it's Benedict stone or just polished sandstone, but uh, look at the beautiful colours. So Mount Sampson is uh, north of Brisbane. So it polishes up real nice, doesn't it? Oh, look at those, uh, look at those minerals. Hang up. So, oh, just unbelievable, spectacular. All right, so I covered up the Queen Street Wall, and I'll see if I can get you some of that Mount Isa granite, um, which um, Mount uh, Sabella granite, which is uh, in the paving stones of the Queen Street Wall. So again, I'll try to get out of the glare. Some amazing rock which has been polished. I have to find out what that is. Oh, quite incredible. Look at this. Amazing. Okay, we're at the Maya Centre. So I don't know what sort of rock that is, but it's all highly polished. The show is pretty. So, most people will be looking at that sort of thing. But um, me being a um, geology fan, uh, happier looking at that. So, now I want to find this um, Mount Isa granite. I mean, I may be walking on it for all I know. Um, if I can't find any, I'll put a shot of it. Um, right now. See the little sparkles? Little sparkles. Very so often. So I don't know if there's a man-made or natural. Again, Right, that pretty rock. Oh, that's a pretty colour. Look at that. So again, we have this interesting rock. I don't know what it is, whether it's man-made or not, but it sure is pretty. Building stone. Right, this is um, the Westpac building. There's your granite. There's your sandstone. So I'll find out and I will put in the notes below what sort of sand, what sort of granite this is. So this is uh, the Bank of New South Wales chambers. Again, amazing, amazing sandstone and granite. Excuse the wind. Right, coming up to the Treasury Casino. Just give you a look back at the Queen Street Mall. 
Sorry, folks. So that's the main. Uh, that's the main mall there in Brisbane. Uh, I didn't always used to be a mall. Trams used to run through it. it used to be a main road. Then Clem Jones came along and got rid of all the trams. Okay, crossing the road carefully with a great deal of care at the lights when the green man is flashing. So this is Brisbane Square. That's the Treasury Casino. Alright, hang on, get a better, better shot for you. Okay, this is the Treasury Casino. It used to be the old Treasury building. Erected in a few stages between 1886 and 1928. In the 1890s, it was rather a boom time for Brisbane in terms of building. And this imposing building served as a symbol of self-government and as a focus for celebratory and patriotic displays. So. In 1883 there was a competition for the best design and a couple of Melbourne blokes won it. But uh, they never used that design. Instead, they used the design of the newly appointed Queensland colonial architect John James Clark. So the building is faced with sandstone ashlar. It's a fine it's a um, it's a finely dressed stone. And different sandstone was used for different stages of the building. So initially, and I will get a bit closer, get art for you. We uh, try to support our artists in Brisbane. Never used to, but there you go. So initially, the stone was from Highfields. And then we go up, Elodin. And it sits on a base of Porphyry, most probably Brisbane Tough. Porphyry being the early name for it. Okay. Getting to the end of our little trip through the CBD of Brisbane. Behind me is the Treasury Casino made of Helidon and Highfield sandstone on a base of uh, porphyry. Yeah, good on you. Okay. Swing around. That is the old Queensland Library. It's now a museum. Um, my mum used to work there, so uh, I'm going to put the sands, I'll tell you in the comments down below what stone that's made out of and the significance of that artwork. So I'm sitting in Queen's Park, named after Queen Victoria, and that is the Treasury Hotel. Here's a picture of Queen Victoria. Sorry folks. After who it is named. Right. So this is now a hotel. Pretty swanky hotel too. I've uh, stayed there overnight. It is very, very nice. So it used to be the old land administration building. Also the old executive building built between 1899 and 1905 designed by Thomas Pye and taken over by James Packett in 1995 along with the Treasury Building for his casino and hotel. So you've got your iconic columns and the building is in the style of Edwardian Brook. Now I'm a bit too stuffed to show you but I will zoom in. So the base, let me zoom in, the base there is light Anogra granite on top and darker Mount Crosby granite and the sandstone is Helidon sandstone very popular 
All right, so I've had a bit of a rest, and we're at the Treasury Hotel. And you can see your two different types of granite, the lighter coloured Anoga granite and your darker coloured granodiorite from further north. And there's your sandstone. So there you go. I'm here on the second floor of the Commissariat store. Uh, not original, it was added in 1913 because uh, they needed to um, alter the premises so that the um, offices could be on a William Street alignment. So we're looking at welded tough mined, quarried by the convicts in the 1800s. So um, I've had to pay seven bucks to get in here. This is now a museum. So this was, this building, it's like construction going on. This building was built by the convict labour, convict labour of Brisbane Tuff between 1828 and 1913. Under the command of the hated Patrick Logan. It was originally two storeys and a third was added in 1913. So I'm, going, I'm having a wander. This is some more Brisbane Tuff from Kangaroo Point. some insect stuff. So the Commissariat store is on Queen's Wharf. Do you that all sorts of artefacts in this museum. I must come back and film all this stuff later on. It's, uh, it's fascinating. So, and I'm going to go down to the bottom before my battery runs out. So a little bit of history. Penal colonies, which Brisbane was, was run on a uh, military system. So a commissariat directed the procurement, supply and distribution of essential goods, as well as serving as a custom house and bank. Look at that, hey, look at that. Look at that tough. Or tough however you want to pr pronounce it. And I'm going to sneak out here. There's some more tough for you. Convicts quarried all that from Higgory Point. Oh. Right. Swing around. There you go. So they changed this position because it was close to the riverbank. So goods could be conveniently loaded and unloaded from a wharf and it also provided only a single point of entry for security, especially for vital supplies like tools, weapons, clothing and rations. So the original riverbank in this area was actually quite steep. It's not now. So a lot of what rock needed to be quarried out and uh, Patrick Logan left that for the naughtiest of the convicts. So you can see a bit of uh, Brisbane tough there and they used skilled labour for the masonry and construction work. So it's made out of Brisbane tough and Kangaroo Point and sandstone from Oxley Creek and the line for the mortar 
was made either by burning oyster shells on over on Stretty or from the limestone hill kiln in Ipswich. Went through a number of uses. Land sales, immigration barracks, police barracks. And uh, luckily it was one of the buildings that uh, wasn't knocked down. So uh, you can see uh, George Regis, 1829, George IV. And as you can see, is right close to the river. Look at that. That's the South East Freeway. This is Queen's Wharf. So uh, the Queensland Government in 1969 allocated $40,000 per annum to restore this place. Here's your, here's your limestone. Sorry, not your limestone, your sandstone. Alright. So, there you have it, the history and geology and the building stones of the Brisbane CBD. So join me next week where I give the history and geology of the Brisbane River and surrounds from the back of a city cat ferry. Now as I'm a musician I can't resist a little bit of song and dance to end the program but as I'm not going to subject you to my terrible singing voice here is a lovely rendition of one of my favourite childhood songs, Morton Bay about how tough things were for the convicts under Patrick Logan. So till next time, uru. One Sunday morning, as I was walking by Brisbane waters, I chanced to stray. I heard a convict, his faith bewailing, as on the sunny riverbank he lay. I am a native of Erin's Island, though banished now from my native shore. They tore me from my aged parents and from the maiden whom I do adore. I've been a prisoner at Port Macquarie, at Norfolk Island, and at Emu Plains, at Castle Hill, and at Caston Gabby, at all these settlements I've worked in chains. But of all the places of condemnation and of New South Wales to Morton Bay I have found no equal excessive tyranny each day prevails for three long years I was beastly treated and heavy irons on my legs I wore my back with flogging is lacerated and oft times covered with my crimson gore. And many a man through downright starvation lies mouldering underneath the clay. And Captain Logan, he had a Mangled all on the triangles of Martin Bay. Like the Egyptians and ancient Hebrews, we were oppressed under Logan's yoke till a native black lying there in ambush gave to this time and his mortal stroke. My fellow prisoners may exhilarated that all such monsters such a death may find. And when from bondage we are liberated, all former suffering 
shall fade from mine.